Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, for those of you who are just coming on board to watch this video, welcome. My name is Nicole. I'm currently 30 weeks pregnant and going to be talking about my fertility journey. I've talked a little bit about the struggles that we were having and I haven't talked about kind of the full story of what has been going on. So I'm going to do my best to <clears throat> talk about all the moments and all the pieces that led us to today. But um, I guess I can start by saying that I do have a son. He's almost three. He's going to turn three in May. And um, we had no issues getting pregnant with him. Um, I didn't know how to originally track my ovulation. So it took us like two months to figure out how to track. But then as soon as I started figuring out how to track, I was good to go. Um, fast forward, I was exclusively, well, not exclusively breastfeeding. I was breast exclusively breastfeeding for the first four months. And then when we went to his four month checkup, we found out that he wasn't getting enough um, food. So I ended up having to supplement in formula, but I half breastfed, well, breastfed as much as I could and um, did formula combo for eight months or so. And then I got my period right around eight months. And I was like, just feeling like I wanted to start my family. Like I wanted to keep growing our family right away. So I talked to my husband about, it. I was like, let's just try. And, um, so I got my first period TMI first period, um, <clears throat> right around eight months. So the next cycle we tried and we got pregnant and I was like, with no fear or any thoughts or any negative ideas, I was like, oh my God, this is awesome. Like I started telling friends cause I was like, there's no issue here. Like why would there be an issue? I, I didn't even honestly think about it, that it could not be real, but I noticed that the line wasn't getting darker. So I messaged my cousin who's like my sister and she's like, a nurse so she knows a lot and I was like I I don't think the line's getting darker I don't know why I've been testing like multiple days and she's like that happened to me before and it's it was like a miscarriage and I was like not processing that I was just like huh like I didn't even think like anything of it but come to find out it was a chemical pregnancy we lost the baby like I started bleeding it wasn't like anything too crazy. I think it was, I got a pregnancy test and then like three days later I started bleeding or something. It was pretty quick, but it's, I was pregnant and I did lose the baby. And I just thought maybe like I didn't give my body enough time once I like started getting my period again, that maybe that was the issue. So, um, we waited a month. So I let that next cycle clear and then we started trying again and now that i've been really good at figuring out how to track my ovulation with these strips i um we got pregnant right away again and this time the baby that we had was growing fine so i was like yeah it was just like i didn't have enough time like this was this was all i needed i just needed to like give my body some more time and so i went into like my six week ultrasound, I think there was one because I think I was like spotting a little bit and um, I didn't have any like weird issues in the preg early pregnancy. Everything seemed to be fine. Everything was like, like I on target. And then I went in for my 12 week ultrasound with the like bigger ultrasound where they kind of check in um, and they found out that the baby was not alive which was like devastating. And I made a whole video about that specific situation because it was just like so tra traumatizing to me. Um, Cause like I was just there, I was at the end of the first trimester and it was like shocking to go in there and think that everything was fine. Like, cause in the beginning of pregnancy, you don't really feel that much. So you don't really know what to expect. So when I went in at 12 weeks and they said the baby had died at 11 weeks because of how they met, how they can measure everything. I was like shocked, I was devastated. And um, 
I'd never heard of like what a DNC was or what I was going to do, but they were like, do you want it to pass naturally or do you want to do a DNC, which is basically an abortion. And for me, I was like, well, I don't want any more time to be wasted. Like I want to start trying again right away. Cause like the whole process of like waiting for the baby to come out naturally and then waiting for your period. I just like, I felt like the right decision for me was the DNC cause I didn't want to even like see anything and have that have that be like something I'd have to deal with. So I scheduled my DNC for two days later. And the sad part was like, we found out that it was a boy and they were like, do you want to do chromosomal testing and just like figure out what was going on? Cause I just turned 35 years old when we lost that baby. It was like August and I turned 35 in June when I found out that I lost the baby and it was 12 weeks. So anyways, um, so that was just a crazy situation. So I got the DNC, everything was fine. And then I wanted to wait like six full months to let my body just like relax. But I still was like mentally focused on getting pregnant as soon as I could, felt like I could. And that being the priority. So we waited six months and I couldn't like think of anything else. like. It was so hard seeing because a couple of my friends were having, we were all having babies at the same time and like I wasn't having my baby and it was so hard. And then I found out the baby was sick with Down syndrome and I was like, oh my God, it's my age. Like, is this gonna happen again? It was just like so many like negative and awful thoughts that like, it's so hard to not beat yourself up over. And honestly, like this vision that I still have every single time I go to the doctor still to this day is like going into my ultrasound and um, like the baby not being alive. That was like, I'd probably need some serious counseling from that. Like it was traumatizing. I definitely have PTSD from it. So um, we waited six months and then again, I started tracking. Um, we didn't get pregnant the first month trying but then we got pregnant the second month and i like can match everything up because i have an app i know how to track ovulation i know the exact day that i'll get that i'll get a positive pregnancy test and everything was fine but when i went in for my ultrasound at six weeks and because i had two losses before they were like let's let you come in early so that you can feel comfortable and I was so happy about that. So I went in at like five or six weeks and they're like, there's no fetal pole. And I'm like, what does that even mean? Like I have a positive pregnancy test. It's like really strong lines for multiple days. I even waited to like call the doctor cause I wanted to make sure like it got darker. And um, they're like, yeah, the baby just isn't there yet. And I was like, so strange like because I mean the three pregnancies that I had prior I never had that situation and I had gone pretty much six weeks for all three of those pregnancies too just because like I either had weird cramping or some sort of bleeding and I never had the situation where there was no fetal pulse so I um went to the doctor after my ultrasound and she was like oh you might have just ovulated late and I was like maybe like Maybe I was just wrong. And I like wanted to believe that that was truly what was happening, but I like knew in my gut cause I was like, well, I track everything and I know exactly how this works. There's no way that it was wrong, but I just, I just wanted that hope that it was like fine. So they're like, come back in a week and we'll see what's going on. So I came back in a week and there was a baby there and it had a heartbeat, but the heartbeat was like, so, so, so like, I don't remember the number at this point, but it was like five or something. It was like horrible. And so I went on like <clears throat> um, what to expect app and went into the community page and just was like, like, is this healthy? Like what's going on and all this stuff. And um, it was like really kind of bad information that I was finding. It was like, 90% chance that your child won't survive with like the heart rate that it was at. And I was like, 
I can't even read this. I have to just like have hope, but I just, I don't know. Something in my gut just said like, this isn't gonna work out. So I went in for my six week, which I should have been six week. And the baby just like, it, it died at like, I think it, it actually died at six weeks. So I think I was like beyond that. Cause I, my first, yeah. So like I first went in at six weeks and it just never, never grew. And um, so I wanted that tested as well and found out it was a little girl. It was a baby girl and there was no reasoning for it. So then I was like, I don't under I don't understand like what's happening. Like I had my first baby fine. Like there was no issues. Like what is wrong with me? And I, um, they were like, we don't know. So you have to go to a fertility doctor and figure it out. And, and like, so in my mind, I'm like, something's wrong with me. Like I'm old now. <laughs> like I was just like going through all these horrible negative thoughts and it was honestly so defeating feeling and especially for those of you who are watching this who have gone through a similar situation just seeing everyone around you have success and no issues it's like why me why does this have to happen to me and i don't even want to get emotional about this because i'm like obviously happy now and like things are great but the struggle is real it's hard it's I just feel for all the women who have to go through this because like you don't understand it unless you go through it. Like I have a couple friends that had gone through really hard times and like I couldn't understand or relate because I like didn't have the same situation. And now I just totally feel for anyone who goes through it because you just feel like it's never gonna work out or it's just gonna be like this same story over and over or for the, those who can't even have children i just it's just so defeating feeling it's really hard so we went to a fertility doctor and i think that took like months to kind of like start the process and everything so i like mentally had to clear out the expectation that i was going to have a child close in age with my first like it just had to kind of be shut down like I had to like rework my mind which probably now looking back was probably the best thing that I could do because I needed to take the focus off like what wasn't actually a priority and really focus on internally and physically what I should have been focusing on this whole time which was myself I do truly believe that there's a plan for us all and God does have a plan and sometimes it's not exactly what you think it's gonna be, but it's so hard to say that and like think about it in the moment. And I like, could because you, you kind of have control over getting pregnant, you're like, I can just make this happen. It's not gonna be complicated, um, but it's crazy how the world works and how like situations work. I don't know, I'm, I'm very spiritual. So I like think, about that whole like plan for us. And um, I think the plan was something different for us and we kind of had to take the harder route there, but I really just focused on my mental health. So I like, I didn't go to counseling, which I probably still to this day need to, <laughs> cause I'm like still struggling. And I'll, once I finish the story, you'll understand everything. But I met this, sound healer slash freaky um woman she lives the town over and she did a sound healing on me and she like i don't know it just was like a rebalance back and then i was recommended to this specialist who focuses on fertility for acupuncture and <clears throat> oh my gosh i have like the most crazy stories about her she's wonderful like if you're in the massachusetts area in the south shore like I have a recommendation for you like message me on instagram and i'll tell you her name but i'm not gonna share her to everyone because um she's a miracle worker i'm not even kidding she like she could read my energies and like she like i can't even talk about her because um i get so emotional about it but she like she knew exactly what was going on with me <clears throat> and i went to her weekly and then i got pregnant 
like the next month. I did find out that I had an infection in my uterine lining, which is so frustrating because like that could have happened from the first pregnancy, it could have happened from the chemical pregnancy. There's no like understanding of it, but I basically found out that I had this infection. I had to go on an antibiotic for two weeks and then they suggested I go on progesterone um, to for the first trimester. Not that it was like necessary, but it, it didn't hurt and it was like only gonna benefit the pregnancy. So then after I finished the um, antibiotic, I waited for that cycle to clear and then we started trying again that first month. And um, I took the progesterone right away and we got pregnant. I was like, I don't even know what to say, like terrified, thankful, blessed, um, just all the emotions, like didn't know what to think. And then I had to basically stay with the fertility group um, for the first couple weeks and um, they were measure er, they were great they like helped me to like be calm I was crying every single ultrasound I was just like hysterical I just was like terrified that like the baby wasn't going to be okay and it's just like so dramatic to go through it just is it's like nothing you can even explain to anyone unless you go through it it's just like you have all this hope and excitement and <clears throat> I just was so scared that I was gonna go through the same thing and like week after week after week, even till I was about 20 weeks pregnant and I went through the anatomy scan and they were like, she's fine, like, you're good. I just still <coughs> was worried and I'm still worried. I'm 30 weeks and like, sometimes she doesn't kick a lot and I'm just like, oh my God, something bad's happening. Like, it's horrible. It's like so much anxiety just goes through being pregnant and being, in this situation, but it's such a blessing. And I'm, I've am i really tried to shift my mindset to like be positive because I want her to feel loved and like that she is such a blessing. Like I can't wait to meet her because I just, I think I'm gonna just like cry hysterically. Like she's my, she's my miracle. It's how I feel. It's just like this journey led me to her and um, I think there's a lot of hope out there for a lot of people. And I really didn't ever give up on that. Like, I, I like thought through all the scenarios in my head, like if we couldn't have a child, like naturally, like for me to just do it, like I'm fine with IVF, whatever process I needed to do, I was like fine going through. Cause I definitely just felt like I needed another child. <clears throat> and, um, and I was able to do it. I was able to do it naturally and I just feel so blessed. I really do. I feel like so lucky and I don't know how to like take that all in. Like it's so hard, but I wanted to share exactly what I've gone through because I didn't share like how I got to today and it's, been hard like I can't even record a lot because I get so emotional and nobody wants to see someone crying or listen to someone crying and I don't know I just wanted to share because I know a lot of people go through this and I lost hope and I was scared but then I changed my mindset and I was like I just feel so strongly inside my family is not done and I was willing to do whatever it took to like get here so if you're watching this and you're feeling sad or like you're going through a really hard time, just believe that it can happen no matter how it happens. Like in some way you can make it happen for yourself, whether it's you doing it, whether it's your best friend carrying your baby or you're adopting, I don't know, whatever you're open to really, but it can happen and I know it can. Um, it just sometimes doesn't work in the planning that you, originally thought so i will keep everyone posted on how everything goes the next 10 or 11 weeks 
11 weeks would be the maximum amount of time, but um, I'm so excited. I only have a couple weeks left with my son. I'm getting big, like I can't even like, I, w I didn't get this big with Jay, but I'll show you my, my stomach. Um, you can't even really see it, but it's not a huge belly, but I was definitely all just, I was just all belly with JJ, my son, and I can see it in my face already. <laughs> it's tough. It's tough, man, what we go through, but I still feel beautiful and I'm so excited. And thanks for being here and listening to my story. <sighs> Everyone's journey is different and um, I'm here to support anyone going through a hard time because I totally feel it in virtual hugs to you and kisses to the babies that we've lost because they're still with us. And um, thanks for being here for this video. I know it's kind of an emotional one again, but I wanted to talk through my journey and I will keep everyone posted on the end of the pregnancy um, and just talk about like maybe what I bring to the hospital because it's different the second time around. It's um, I'm more prepared and know exactly what to bring. The first time was a joke, like overpacked, didn't need everything that I brought, <laughs> it's like crazy, but um, Again, thanks for being here. Love you all and we'll see you soon. Bye.